Hi, we're live. We're the Snarky Sisters. I'm Diana. And I'm Lisa. <laughs> Fancy th opening theme music, Lisa. Who are these people singing anyway, Diana? Sound fabulous. Oh. Yeah, well, I was going to say they kind of suck, but. <laughs> hey, <laughs> we're working on a new doc documentary, a docudrama that we hope we you guys will participate in. It's called Your Sound Sucks. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to be in <laughs> Here's our opening theme song. It's the Sunday Songwriter Spotlight with Starkey Sisters. We're live at half past noon. Right here on our Facebook page. With our friends we will commune. Because we're Marxists and communists. Featuring Ruthie Loxton and some of her fabulous tunes. We're here in our pajamas. We're a pure angelic sight. Who writes these lyrics? <laughs> Drinking our cocktails. Our recipes, they will delight. Oh, oh, hey. What you got, Diana? I've got a blueberry smash. Ooh. Blueberries, vodka, blueberry juice from the pie I just made, sugar-free whipped cream, and blueberries. Ooh, that's what? pretty bad. Well, Delicious. cheers, everybody. I've got electric iced tea today. Don't hurt yourself. Oh, where was I in the song, Diana? Hmm. Oh, I think I was here, right? Yeah. With the sensational Willie Berry. And the incomparable Scott McKnight. <laughs> yeah. Welcome, everyone. We're so glad to have you here. We have a special spotlight on Ruthie Logsdon. And our special guests, if you weren't listening to the song, are Willie Berry and Scott McKnight. Woohoo! So is this Americana or Roots or all of the above? Rootsicana. What do y'all think? Oh, that's interesting. I like that. It's um, <laughs> country. Um, what do I call it? Americana country. Americana country. How about you, Scott? What do you think this is? Well, I, the entire thing. It's yeah, Americana country I, stuff. I've got is a little bit more rocky poppy to throw into the mix. Okay, Americana today. country, rocky poppy roots. Amera Papacana. No, <laughs> that's good. <laughs> Pop rocks. <laughs> Hey, Willie, what do you think this is? <laughs> uh, I guess I'd like to call it, a, a, I guess, just a regular amalgamation of good music. That's really all we're uh, playing here today. Oh. Hey, that's so. a good way to start our show with some good music. And speaking of good music, we got good musicians for sure and good songwriters. And Ruthie Logston, we're so happy to have you here. Oh, it's just so exciting to have you. Thank you. Um, so um, you did a, a porch concert a couple days ago. Yeah, um, since we can't play in venues right now, hopefully we will again, we kind of created our own. So we've got Ruthie and the Wranglers doing the backyard tour. So we just had a concert uh, out back here, and uh, it went fabulous. We got a video of it on our uh, website, and uh, it really was super fun. And we're going to just keep doing the backyard tours for a while and other stuff in between. Um, we, got a, we got a tour at Bill's Backyard. We I'm going to call that the Aspen Hill Amphitheater. And uh, we'll be over in Vienna, Virginia at Andy's in October. You know, do, do they do Porch Fest uh, up in uh, Tacoma Park? Yeah, they, they've they been doing it annually. Um, it tends to rain like crazy. And uh, I haven't actually been around to do it myself. Um, I performed at one in Hyattsville. Okay. But um, there's a lot of people playing on porches in Tacoma Park, though. I mean, there's there's tons and tons of music in Tacoma Park. <laughs> yeah, that's for sure. So, um Tell us a little bit about the bands that you've been in and uh, any other um, songwriting groups that you've been in. Because I know you uh, have worked with other songwriters. I saw you with Susan Rowe and Annette Wasel Wasilek a few weeks ago playing outside. Yeah, well, Susan and I have been um, working together for a while. And um, uh, she's a great songwriter. And... Um, I love to sing harmony with her and I help her do her recordings. I've, I'm the one who does the video movement for her. And um, Annette just lives down the street, Annette Wasilek. So it's very handy 
to, and Annette and I are on the same record label. But anyway, it's really handy to have, you know, them around. So anytime we want to get together and play, we can. And uh, Terry Burroughs uh, lives upstairs and she's a singer and we just, it's a great uh, music, music uh, neighborhood. But um, Ruthie and the Wranglers has been my, my, I would like to say bread and butter, but mostly just butter for the last 30 years. And um, I've also, I had some duos and I had a trio with um, uh, Patty Reese and Mariana Wasilek years and years ago called Plum Crazy. But, um, but Ruthie and the Wranglers is it. And uh, right now I'm working with um, uh, Tom Friedrich on drums. And uh, he's been with us for a long time. He's from Annapolis. I've got um, uh, Andy Rutherford on lead guitar and Bill Starks on piano. And we've been recently working with Arch Alcantara uh, on bass. You and, always have such great people. Yeah, well, Arch plays with the Jelly Roll Mortals which is one of my favorite bands. And that band is Scott McKnight, who you're going to get yeah. to hear today too. Awesome. Yeah, it's a great community. Um, and that was on our show early on when we first started. Ah. And um, we're going to have Susan Rowe on in September. So. That's great. Yeah. Have so Ruth, can you tell us a little bit about one of the songs that you want to play for us? And you can. Oh, sure. Um, I'm going to play a song called uh, Someday. And uh, I wrote it a while back. I was um, was thinking about a relationship that, you know, once you get out of a relationship and then your partner gets with someone new, this happens all the time. But it's, my friends are always talking about, oh no, there's so and so. Don't look over there. <laughs> <laughs> but um, it's really about um, when you when they get into another relationship you can see there, the other woman is gonna go through the same thing that you went through. I mean, you know, we've all, we've all probably been there. So anyways, it's called Someday She's Gonna Miss You. Okay. Should I play it now? Yeah, yeah, I'm gonna go ahead and mute so we don't have excess noise. Okay, here we go. Someday she's gonna miss you.
that song, you know, sort of wistfully, you know, and sweet. But there's a way to sing. The, I could see you singing it two ways. Yeah. Know? Well, I don't hold grudges, so. Oh, there you go. <laughs> what? <laughs> a beat and. <laughs> <laughs> That's a great song because you can sing it in a sweet way and you can also do a really snarky version of it too. Oh yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Great song. So when did you write that one? Um, I wrote it um, probably, I think it was maybe 2005 might be when I put out that album. I called the album Someday. Nice. And um, there, there was a lot of songs. That was a kind of a key moment for the Wranglers. We, when we put that song out, it was um, all original, the first all original album. And, um, I was, How many songs did you have on it? Um, I think maybe 13. Wow. Oh, it was my lucky number, so that's how <laughs> it should be on it. <laughs> <laughs> it was great. Morning, everybody. <sighs> Morning. Oh, I wanted to give a shout out to Marge Matthew. It's her birthday today. Phil's mom. Oh, happy, happy birthday. Marge. Woohoo. So, so I got some. Uh, coffee here to drink with you all but it's uh it's got a little bit of whiskey in it and that's just to celebrate marge's birthday all right well cheers <laughs> <laughs> so could you sing for us for a second song ruthie we'd love to hear something more oh great okay let's see uh this one whoops i want to put it in front of me All right, here we go. This is one that um, I really like to do in a group because it has some beautiful, beautiful harmonies on it. And so when you hear the song, if you find some harmonies, um, I probably won't hear you right now, but I will pretend. And um, it's called For Crying Out Loud.
Yeah. Nice. Thank you very much. Nice lyrical hook. Yeah. Thanks. Right. Yeah. I love writing songs. And if I can't um, come up with anything and I need something new, I just look around to my friends who are songwriters and I choose their songs. I've written, I mean, I, I wish I'd written. Um, I uh, started singing a song called uh, Minimum Wage by Susan Rowe, and I do one of Annette's songs. Um, what's that called? Um, I can't think of the name of it for some reason. Um, oh, well. All right, Annette, I forgot the name of your song. And uh, I do a song that Janine Wilson does called So Long, her and Max Evans wrote, that I really like. That's so great that you're like a community of songwriters that are doing each other's stuff. Yeah, well, you know, I, I have this um, organization that I started called Gig Magnet, and I have uh, several clients. And when over the years, I've had several clients right now. I just have a couple, which is nice. Um, but I work with a lot of different people, and through those people, I meet other people. And then, you know, my band members are from different walks of life, and I meet people through them. And I, as you guys, I mean, I know, I've known all you guys a long time because the, the music scene here is just so well connected. Yeah, we were talking about Elvis Night the other day, or, or actually the other hour. We were just talking about that. Um, about what? How, like the, I, I met Diana through the Fabulettes, and I met you through the Fabulettes as well. And I, I was saying earlier that I was looking at YouTube videos and I saw you doing some songs for Elvis Night. And um, that's something that brings the community together as well. So. Absolutely. And um, that's one of the more fun gigs. Uh, just last week, I got together with Tom, my drummer, Tom Friedrich, and he just brought a snare. Uh -huh. And uh, Arch uh, Alcantara, he brought a, a really cool looking uh, retro guitar. It was super fun to play with them. And uh, we did a little trio at the senior home down the street called Malta House for about, I don't know, 15 people outside, socially distanced. And um, I had to learn 10 Elvis songs real quick because the ones that I know are not ones that I would do acoustically or in a small setting like that. You know, there would be songs they don't probably know that are more rocking. But I, but I learned uh, Fool Such As I and Love Me Tender and just some songs that have like gorgeous chords and I'm just so happy I did that. I love, you know, working with uh, Ronnie Neumeyer on the Bandhouse Gigs thing. It, it kind of forces you to play other music, you know, and high quality music. And that's how, that's how I just try to get better, always trying to improve. Diana, what songs do you guys do on Elvis Night? Um, Baby, You're So Square. Uh, got a lot of loving to do in Little Egypt. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. And HTC used to do Full Such As I, which is a beautiful song. Isn't that the best? Yeah, um, it's a great uh, song. I highly recommend playing that if you like playing guitar, just because the chords are so sweet. Listen to that one. So, Ruth, we're having so much fun listening to you. Um, what what you got for us next? Oh, I want to do a song. Um, I wrote this um, on my way to the, partly on the way to the airport um, when I was in Nashville, and um, we were in a big, big hurry. And I was so mad, I was so upset, I just blurted out, I'm going to kill myself if it's the last thing I do. I do not know why I said it that way or what I said. And I wrote it down and I kept it for a long time. And then I was sitting out on the dock um, in Annapolis and I was enjoying the, the sun and uh, I was reading a book. And um, I was reading Johnny Cash's book. There's several, but this one's called Cash. And he was sitting out on the front porch on his plantation in the first chapter and saying how wonderful it was that he had time to sit down and write and you know, just take advantage of this really nice, quiet time. And I thought, yeah, that's great. I should be writing right now. So um, I was thinking about how I just didn't really have time. I kept like pushing myself all the time, you know, and it's just feel like, there's never enough time to do anything. But if you stop and you focus on something, there's time. You just make time for things. Anyways, this one um, is called I'm Gonna Kill Myself If It's the Last Thing I Do. I'm Gonna Kill Myself It's the Last Thing I Do. Okay. <laughs> Last thing I do. 
Don't you miss that sound? I didn't know I was <laughs> Don't you miss that sound? Mm-hmm. The popcorn, the peanuts, the roaring crowds. Oh, no peanuts or popcorn. Robbie we- said that sounds like a coffee grinder, Diana. Hmm, it doesn't. <laughs> sounds like wild applause. Okay. Speaking of Robbie, he's out there. And Hi, I- Robbie. Robbie's out there listening. We listened to his show this morning on WOWD. Tacoma Radio, everyone watch that on Sunday mornings. Shout out. Shout out to Arch. Arch is listening. Uh, Susan Rowe is listening. Uh, Tommy Wright is listening. Uh, Esmo and Adele Biancarelli. I hope I pronounced that that right. Yes. And Terry Burroughs. Oh, hey, Terry. <laughs> Robbie says, I hate that sound of the coffee grinder. <laughs> okay. Oh, is that what that is? No. It's wild applause. <laughs> it, it sounds like the crowd of the Beatles at Shea Stadium. Exactly. Exactly. Thank you. <laughs> anyway, it's a coffee grinder. Making coffee and making bacon. <laughs> oh. How you doing, Diana? What? How are you doing? I'm in Maine. I'm in Maine and... Uh, I, I'm on a lake, and I made this morning. I made all, I made a bl- blueberry pie, Ooh. all from scratch, including the crust. How yeah. many pounds of blueberries? What? How many pounds of blueberries? Lots of blueberries. I do it. It's a giant bowl that I have. Yeah, made the crust, rolled it out. Come on up and have some pie. Maine blueberries, right? Yeah, Maine blueberries. Yeah, yeah. okay. Maine blueberries are very tiny. What's the weather and like there? What? What's the weather? It's 62 or 65. It's beautiful. It'll oh, reach 72. Is it, is it true that the rain in Maine is mainly on the plain? That's completely true. <laughs> <laughs> Good one. So, Ruthie, what's your, this is your last song. What's your, what's wow. it going to be? I was going to do another song. Um, having too much fun chatting. Uh, this one I wrote um, because I was watching um, Tat. Was it Taxi? Yeah. What's that guy's name? Jim Ignatowski. Is that the guy from Taxi? I'm not. Remember that character, Jim Ignatowski, from from uh, from Taxi. Anyway. I, I think that's his name. Yeah, okay. Thank you, Scott. So. Drawing <laughs> <laughs> blanks. Well, I'm not going to bother to tell me that whole story. I'll tell it at a gig sometime. But um, I'm going to get it up here. Mm -mm. It's called If a Heart Breaks. And um, I took it from that old saying, you know, if a tree falls in the forest and nobody's there to hear it, does it make a sound? 
So I turned that into a country song. Wow. That was great. There's little imperfections in there just so you know. <laughs> Me playing live solo. Ruthie, do you, I can hear that as a country shuffle. What do you, what, do you, what kind of uh, what do you do that as? Well, it is a country shuffle when the band okay. plays with me. When I play it by myself, I sort of just make it up as I go every time. But got my own style. <laughs> yeah, cool. No, that was beautiful, Ruthie. I okay. love that. I love your high note at the end. That lonesome note oh, is yeah. beautiful. Really good. So what are you doing for the rest of the summer? It's almost over, but what's next? Well, um, what am I doing? Um, it seems like something just keeps cropping up over and over. Um, I'm going to do an interview with Steve Hoke. Um, I think that's how you pronounce his last name. On Zebra TV. Uh, I don't remember the date. It's a Monday. Oh, look, I'm at my computer so I can look at the calendar. <laughs> since, um, since September, it's on the 14th, 
14th of September on Z Zebra TV. I don't know if they call it Z TV or Zebra TV. But, um, yeah. Check out his show. Um, pretty cool stuff. Um, what else? We're do you know, I'm going to be doing that tour thing. Um, the backyard tour. That's a great idea. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we probably will be out on the porch uh, playing whatever comes up. You know, we did a show at... Um, for Glen Echo, oh, this is happening with a lot of musicians, and um, we were we were um, scheduled to play at Glen Echo. So uh, the date that was canceled, they put us on their sh um, Facebook page, and uh, we went live from Glen Echo, which was my backyard that day. And um, like I said, we're going to do one in Tom's backyard. We did uh, the IMT show, Institute of Musical Traditions. We did that in Tom's basement, and um, that was really fun. I mean, we spent a long time trying to get everything just right. We put the put the backdrop up and get the lighting, and it was a lot of work, you know. But once you get it all, you get that under your belt a few times, it, it seems to go pretty well. So we're real happy with the last video that we made at our uh, at our album. Yeah, Arch did a great job on the video. Beautiful yeah, job. He did, and I had Terry. Burroughs um, manning the laptop so she could make sure the shots were right because there's two shots. There's like the one looking straight at the stage and then you have like one off to the side, you know, that can be roaming around, or running around, I should say, with the uh, iPhone camera. And that was uh, Steve Devoney. And he helped do that. Mark Seagraves helped out. And, uh, you know, we had a lot of help. It really takes a village to put on a concert that big, you know. Yeah. Not yeah. that it's an arena, but, you know, it's, it's just as much work in your backyard as it is in large, you know, <laughs> search mirrors, sound mirrors. So you need a lot of bug spray, so that makes it extra. Yeah, we difficult. always put the bug spray. We we put it in the tip jar so that. They <laughs> bug spray. It's right over there in the tip jar. Brilliant. By the way, if you look on our page, there's a a place where you can virtually tip. Well, it's a real tip. It's not really a virtual tip, but you can audit <laughs> electronically tip. Ruthie and Scott and Willie. I hope there's one for Willie too. But we're going to make a transition to Scott. And Scott, your background looks suspiciously familiar. Yeah, uh, I'm just wait. on the other side of the same screen that's behind Ruthie. I knew that. I knew that. That's, there he is. Wave hi. <laughs> so Scott, everyone knows Scott McKnight. He's the, the dean of uh, songwriting in Washington, D.C., um, and uh, won every possible award imaginable. So has Ruthie, by the way. And um, we're so happy that you are here with us. It's an honor. Uh, you've played with um, Lost Train Home and Kevin Johnston, the linemen, and the grandsons, and uh, you have your own band called, I, and I only got it this morning, Naughty Pine. Because I pronounce yeah. it Naughty Pine. It's spelled Naughty Pine. It's spelled Naughty Pine. Yes, that was, <laughs> that was kind of a '90s, early. Uh, that band uh, went away about 2005 or so and was replaced by Jelly Roll Mortals. In a lot of ways, okay. Jelly Roll Mortals is a continuation of Naughty Pine, but with Arch and with Jim Ferris. Great, great, great glues, both of them. Gorilla glue, gorilla glues. <laughs> Well, what are you going to play for us for your first song, Scott? Uh, I think I'm going to play this song. It's called Big Red Nose. I wrote this about a year or so ago. It's intended to be kind of a, a rocker. It hadn't occurred to me to do it on acoustic guitar until about three days ago. So I've been trying to, trying to work it out, and we'll see if this actually works. So, um, do... I recall the way that she compared me to a clown. I call that day the day the circus came to town. She's laughing when I cry. She laughs when I fall down. She's been laughing since the day the day the circus came to town. I'll never be her star. Not as far as she can see To her the world is a tiny car Filled with guys like me Just picture Bozo's nose And Emma Kelly's eyes Add in Pagliacci's tears Hey, that's me, my new disguise 
die She doesn't laugh inside She said doesn't wear a show She's laughing at me A sad-eyed clown with a big red nose I'll never be her star Not as far as she can see To her the world's just a tiny car Full of guys like me I recall the way that she compared me to a clown. She's been laughing since the day, the day the circus came to town. Yeah, she's been laughing since the day, the day the circus came to town. Woohoo! I only messed it up a few times. That's all right. It was awesome. Cool. Uh, Diana, you're muted. I knew that. <laughs> my, my antenna went up when you sang about, first of all, Emmett Kelly. And I don't know. I know. I remember who Emmett Kelly was. But Pagliacci, I've been trying to write a song with, with Pagliacci in it for decades. And you're the first one who's been able to do uh, it successfully. Smokey Robinson. What? Which song was that? Tears of a Clown. I'm pretty sure he makes a Pagliacci reference. Really? Just like Pagliacci, dear. <laughs> okay. <laughs> I, I kind of messed up the rhythm of that part of it. So, uh, that would be great. But whatever. I got the words came out. So you no, that was great. Thank you. That was That's a funny song. That's a really funny song. Mm, thank you. Especially, and it's timely, too, because people have been writing about some kind of clown car show that's rolled into Washington, D.C. and is about to roll out? I don't know. <laughs> uh, around the corner, I've got a, a cheap guitar that I bought. It's a it's a first act guitar, and the finish on it is what I think a lot of people would refer to as clown burst. And I wrote the music on that guitar, and then I was like, now what am I going to write the lyrics about? And I looked at the, the guitar and like, clown, clown, a clown with a big red nose. And so that's how... That's how that all came about. It's sort of named after the guitar. Oh, I, you you need to show us that guitar. I'm sorry. We'll post uh, a picture. I'll tell you what. I'll go. I'll go grab it while while Willie's playing and okay. and bring it in here. So. <laughs> Clown burst, folks. Yeah. Where's your roadie? What have you been the doing? And where's your roadie, Scott? What have I been doing? I've been doing yard work and walking, and I do have still a, a, a day job that keeps me a little bit busy and uh, been trying to write and record. Um, I, I, I got some free recording software stuff that makes me able to make symphony orchestra sounds, and I've been having a lot of fun with that. Trying to, I have an oboe sound now, so if I ever want to cover uh, I Got You, Babe, I can go <laughs> or or peter and the wolf if you want to do a rock version of peter and the wolf there you go That's right true. no no or just write write a symphony i should sit down and do that sure why not i'll knock that out in a week what's the software i'm a gear a gearhead what software do you use it's a the bbc has some uh, uh symphonic orchestra software that you that you can install and use as a vst in your daw for those people in the know and they have different tiers and the this uh entry level one is called discover and you can pay 50 bucks for it or you can put your name on a list and they'll email you back in two weeks and give you a link and you can download it for free. And it doesn't cool. do everything, but it's awfully wow. fun. Wow. Wow. Timpani too. Real... I think it, yes, it does have timpani. Marimba, cellos, celli. <laughs> Celli. Speaking of Dawes, who here knows how to pronounce W A P? No? Nothing? No. Okay. You can look uh -huh. it up. <laughs> I know how I pronounce it. Never mind, never mind. We won't go there. We won't go there. <laughs> What's your next song? Uh, my next song, it's okay. This is a song. It ended up being about Altoona, Pennsylvania. The name of the song is Cincinnati. Um, I wrote this song. I mean, I don't know how long of an intro I can give to this. I, I wrote this song and I just had this one part that goes. <laughs> And I 
can come up with words. And I emailed Kevin Johnson. I said, can you come up with words for this? And he emailed back and said, I know what this song is about. This is guys in a small town in Rust Belt. And, and I know Altoona, Pennsylvania, and I know where the people are. And they've got this railroad track that runs west out of Altoona and goes up the mountain. And up on the top, you can see a long way to the west. And you should make the song be about Altoona, Pennsylvania. And like, okay, I sat down, changed a bunch of words. I, I wrote a, an entire bridge that works in the Altoona thing. And now I've got this song, but I never got words for it. <laughs> da, 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 da. So... When I get to that part, just imagine a, a, a trumpet, a solo trumpet playing that part. Okay, cool. Um, and that's so um, ready. Or a whole orchestra. <laughs> or a whole orchestra. Or, or, or just the trumpet off of my digital trumpet uh, orchestra thing. So This has got major seventh chords in it, which is why I said that there would be some pot involved in this. I've been working in the district office In a cubicle that's five by five And there's barely any air there Just enough to stay alive I was supposed to be a big kahuna One of Altoona's most impressive guys But you can't be a kahuna in a cubicle of any I was going with Samantha Angstrom Down in accounting with the long black hair but she dumped me for Bill Palmer Now she acts like I'm not even there Bill's vice president of acquisitions He's got an office on the seventh floor When Samantha goes to see him I hear they goes and lock the door I might ride west out of East Altoona I might go looking for what I deserve Get on the train at the Amtrak station Climb over the mountain on the horseshoe curve From up on top you can see forever Looking west for where the sun goes down I'll ride that train on the California While lights go down on this sorry town Drop it solo I've been working in the district office in a cubicle that's five by five And there's barely any air there Just enough to stay alive I'm supposed to go to Cincinnati I would rather go to Waikiki If I'm not at work tomorrow You'll know why you don't see me Enjoy it now. It's going to be a long time before I get a crowd this big. <laughs> so I, I got to say, this last chord here, that goes, this last chord goes out to Arch. You'll know what I mean. <laughs> Is it a sus something? Is it a sus seven? Yes, it's, it's, it's a sus tour. You can call it an <laughs> E9. He knows I like it. And I happened to <laughs> notice he actually used it on one of his songs when he did this last week. <laughs> Well, that was that was really great. Tell them you have how many albums do you have out, and can people go to your? What's your website? Me, uh, 
Me. Yeah, about 20 years ago, Kevin Johnson put out on Sam Records uh, a CD called It Works For Me, and it was uh, just a collection of home demos of mine. It was two discs with 47 songs, and that's the only Scott McKnight CD there is out there. There are two Jelly Roll Mortals CDs uh, that you can get as digital downloads. There's physical copies of the first one, which is just called Jelly Roll Mortals, uh, the second one, we made 50 physical copies because we knew that, well, we sold 25 of them and kept the rest. And because we figured who buys physical copies anymore. But you can download that. That's called Duck Boat. Great. That you need to get your timpani and uh, string section together and do an, do an album. Well, you know, we've, we're working on a third CD or a third album, which will probably be more re uh, released as a bunch of singles. But uh Maybe, maybe there's still time I can put some cello on it. Or <laughs> Good. Some oboes or some timpani. And some violin cello and some feta cello. Right. And, and some lemon can... cello. Right. <laughs> Sounds delicious. Well, thanks, Scott, for being on the show and come back thanks soon. Thanks for having me. I will. And thank you. Our next guest is Mr. Willie Berry. And uh, Willie sings with um, lead singer for the Rockasonics. One of my favorite band names ever. And uh, he started out as a 15-year-old prodigy sensation. And now what? You're a 26-year-old sensation? Well, I, I, uh, I got to pay that guy who wrote that stuff. <laughs> no, I'm been forgetting about that. But uh, yeah, so I started out uh, around Frederick doing just the uh, singer-songwriter thing, uh, Circle at the... Um, downtown they had uh, a lot of people come in every week um but uh that's kind of where i started that was the first show uh, i remember i got uh so i got the check over there from one of my first shows um but uh after that yeah it, it was kind of playing all around frederick a lot and i believe uh not too far from frederick when i played uh ruthie what you remember what year that gig was in brunswick that we had together um so first time i saw your band yeah. I forget when, when exactly it was. I, I don't know. Ten years ago? It's something like that. But anyway, we had done a show together. Uh, my band, Willie and the Chaperones, my original band. And uh, Ruthie was on that bill, too. I believe you guys were the headliners that, that uh, year. Um, yeah. And uh, as, as the story goes, as it was told to me, that uh, Ruthie had told either Caroline or Louie or, or somebody in this area about uh, my band and uh, had talked about getting us for the Buddy Holly show. Um, or me anyway, and uh, and Louie, I think Caroline reached out one year, and I wasn't uh, able for the the, uh, the time they were having it, uh, but then the following year, Louie reached out to me and, and said, you know, we'll back you and uh, come be a part of the show, and uh, once we got together for practice, it was so fun, we just couldn't uh, play one time and, and not and have it be over, so so we kept going from there, and we are what we are today, the Rock Sonics, so it's been a on journey so far and you've been playing lately in some backyard concerts and i saw something out on a street right yeah this past we week? Did, uh that was in annapolis that was actually a uh we did that last year called dining under the stars um and it's out out in public and uh people were distanced of course properly and uh, uh even some dancers you know there was some dancing how can you not to this kind of music kind of uh, forces you into it almost but uh it was fun everybody was uh, you know obeying the uh restrictions to the, the best of their abilities and it was real fun to play in front of a crowd again um so that went very smooth and i think we're going to do it again uh in Bowie uh come september i we just got one of the dates confirmed i think it's going to be uh yeah uh september 13th i'm going to be at the old Bowie town grill outside and and uh for people online have seen uh, the Fleabots have done that before. Um, uh, Ray Apollo Allen and his band have done that. And it's been pretty successful um, from what I hear. There's plenty of space and nobody's too close to each other. So <laughs> looking forward to doing that. So some of the people are commenting. And by the way, uh, also commenting so far, Lloyd Wolf says hi and Terry Burroughs and Bonnie Crystal Adler and Louie Newmeyer and Sam Landymore are all waving and saying hi. Um so some people are saying, oh, I didn't know that uh, Willie wrote songs. So tell us about how you write songs and yeah. play us one. 
I don't write very many, but when I do, I, I, I have an occasional break and get uh, get lucky once or twice. And I've got about maybe, I don't know, four or five songs. Some are more in limbo than others, and some are more regularly played. Um, but uh, I, every once in a while, uh, I've had a bit of writer's block recently, but, uh, you know, it, you never can tell. It changes from one day to the next. Um, so this first one... Uh, if I remember correctly, it was written around one of the um, around the time that the Buddy Holly show usually happens in February, um, and I believe it was either 2017 or 18 that I wrote this one uh, called "Jump, Wiggle, and Shake," which is kind of a jumpier number um, and, and swings a little bit more. It goes just a little bit like this. Hip cats a roll, rockin' round the clock, and they satisfy the soul. Rockin' and a poppin' till broad daylight, don't you mess so with my duck tail, oh, there's gonna be a fight. We're gonna jump, a wiggle and a shake, gonna jump, a wiggle and a shake, gonna jump, a wiggle and shake away the blues tonight. Well, it's a knocked out dive on the edge of town where the cool cats go and the blues come around. Rockin' and a rollin' in my blue suede shoes, hey, the Baby, maybe have you heard the news? We're gonna jump, wiggle and shake. Yeah, so I wrote that one about a year, two, two or three years ago, and uh, it, that song's gone gone through a couple of uh, transitions. Um, it started out more as a kind of a more of a rocker, but then I uh, kind of switched it around to go to the, get that more kind of jumpier feel, and uh, I think that's the way we like it now, and uh, it's, it's pretty solid the way it is. Uh, we got some cool arrangement on that, so. Uh, that's one of my uh, favorite songs to do solo too, because it's so easy to play and and not a lot. To yeah, it. you're good. You're but good. And it, the jump, wiggle, and shake is from one of well, one of my favorite songs that I do. My boy Elvis. You know that song. Right. Um, <laughs> yeah, and uh, I actually got that title from uh, Janice Martin. Uh, Rock my boy Billy. Elvis. Right. Right. That's At the it. end, they all say jump, wiggle, and shake. Yep. And I, why? I don't recall. There's shake, rattle, and roll. There's sag, drag, and fall. And I've never heard of jump, wiggle, and shake. Sag, uh, drag, and fall. <laughs> that's the King number, Rockabilly song. By the way, um, I really like how uh, the picture of Johnny Cash is strategically placed behind you. Oh, yeah. Say hi. <laughs> that's great. <clears throat> okay, so what are you going to play for us next? 
Well, this next song was uh, written before this, that first song. Um, oh, gosh, I don't know what year I wrote this, but uh, it was back when Hank Deedles was still around, um, when we were still playing, and, and uh, Deedles hope comes back soon. Uh, but uh, I recall there's a video of this online, being and uh, David Goodfriend uh, were there the morning of when the fire had happened, uh, just after, and everybody was checking the scene. Um, me and David had... Uh, come out. And there was a couple of other people there, um, but I don't remember all the names. Um, and I kind of changed the lyrics around on this song to sort of fit the situation that uh, we were in, uh, and we played inside the uh, burned-out remains of, of Hank Deedles. And uh, but I'm going to play it similar to the way it was written originally, um, and this is still a mainstay in the Rockasonic set list. A little song called "Wild Man." It goes like this. Hollow man alive. I'm a wild man, wild man, let's go. Wild man, wild man, wild man, let's go out tonight. When you walk on in and you sit on down, you're waiting for the band with the rocking sound. Rockabilly music, it starts at nine. Everybody rock, gonna have a time. Wild man, wild man, let's go. Wild man, wild man, wild man, let's go out tonight. If you dig it at the beat with the rockin' sound, come on up and lay your money down. Everybody's body gonna get real wild. Listen to me, baby, I'm a real wild child. This is where the solo would come in if I didn't drop my pick. <laughs> I forgot a verse, but uh, you know, that's the gift of the song. Anyway. Yeah. 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 Awesome. Well. Sounds great, Willie. Thanks, Ruthie. Yep. That was so much fun. Thank you. No problem. Thank you. <laughs> did you how, where did you learn how to play guitar? Oh boy. Uh, well, I took uh, lessons first, uh, just to get the basics. I took uh, lessons at uh, Music and Arts uh, in Frederick uh, for a couple of years, and uh, by the end, I, I kind of had to stop because there w was less learning going on and more showing what I had uh, been playing at home mm -hmm. going on. So I was, uh, in, in a sense, performing for the teacher instead of learning uh, new stuff like I should have been. So uh, during the end of the lessons, that kind of where it dropped off. But uh, that's where I learned to just get the basics. And um, and uh, I do I do a little bit of picking here and here and there, but uh, nothing nothing. I'll say I'm a lead guitar player for. But uh, but it's just fun, you know, to learn learn new things. And being in, in the rock of Sonics has definitely helped my musicianship for sure. So. Well, that's great. It's it's good that you're starting. You all are starting to play out again. Yeah, I'm stoked about that. Yeah, so that's hopefully, real. Hopefully, both my bands can get to do that soon. But, Where can uh, people find you? Well, uh, Facebook is, is a good place to start. Um, the Rockasonics and Willie and his chaperones both have Facebook pages. 
Um, my first band has their own website, willieberry.com. Uh, not a lot has been going on uh, for obvious reasons, but uh, we hope to get busier as things uh, get a little more under control. Um, but uh, the Rock Sonics, best place for them is Facebook on their event page, and uh, uh, check them out. Give us a like and check us out. Uh, like I said, uh, 9-13, September 13th at Old Bowie Town Grill, and that's on a Sunday. That's going to be at 4:30 to 7:30 p.m. So that should be a lot of fun. Uh, distance, of course, and uh, hope we can see you out of that one. That would be really cool. Well, thank you, Willie Berry. You were great. great. Sure, thanks for having yeah, me. Yeah, thank you. We all were breaking yes. up while you were playing. It was really fun. Yeah. <laughs> I, I love Scott, did, <laughs> Scott, did you have your Clown Burst guitar? Uh, my Clown Burst? Yes, I do. I do. Oh. <laughs> Yeah. It's beautiful. It kind, of, it kind of looks like a Les Paul, but it's a first act, which means that you could, at the day, buy this for about $100 at Walmart. But <laughs> it's it's really a, an okay guitar. It almost looks like one of the Paisley guitars a little bit, the fin finish. Uh, I, or yes. not. <laughs> it, it's not really a Paisley pattern. Yeah. But, um, but I like it, and it records well. Yeah. It's a great cool. inspiration for a great song. It was a great song, Scott. Well, thank you. Thank you. We're going to do one song ourselves um, because if I delayed it another week, Lisa would kill me because she made a lot of props for this song. And uh, in the spirit of Sunday brunch songs, we're going to we're going to we're going to play it, right? Tell them what it is. Uh, well, it's it's a it's a song that uh, I wrote. Uh, that can double as both a way to teach your children or grandchildren or nieces or nephews the alphabet. And it's also a fun adult game or children's game. It depends on how liberal you are, I guess. Right? Going around the world. It's called Going Around the World. A is for absolute. B stands for brewers. C is for cognac, and D is for doers. Electric ice team, my mega fit company, to go around the world with me. French L goes F, Galliano is G. Highball is H, Irish coffee for me. Jameson's Kahlua, or Big Lime or Key. We can go around the world. Well, if you drink chronologically, you're subject to pathology. You wake up in a week with a head full of sorrow. Try it alphabetically, I'll tell you parenthetically. You'll feel fine when you wake up tomorrow. Well, have a margarita with lots of salt and lime. Or you can try a not quill, but then you sleep all the time. Old fashioned gets you smashing, planners packs a punch. We can go around the world. Quaalude, rum and coke, or a Singapore sling. Tom Collins, Undertaker, a vodka with everything. Whiskey, what Russian, or wine in a can. We can go around the world, wine in a can. Almost back home, and Yingling's domestic, American grown. Just give me a zombie, the color of your hair. We can go around the world, uh huh. We can go around the world, it sounds delicious. We can go around the world, absinthe in Paris. <laughs> How many drinks did you drink, Lisa? Um, about 13. <laughs> All right. That's a record. Someone has to beat that. This has been so much fun. Thank you so much, Ruthie, Scott, Willie. We've had a great time with you guys. Please come back say, soon. I, I got to say props for the props. <laughs> it's Reverend Jim. Ruthie, Reverend Jim. Reverend Jim from Taxi. That's who oh. Oh, these people are saying it's Reverend Jim, <laughs> the guy from Back to the Future. Yeah, it's a guy. Yes. Like, well, who's she talking about? And now it just the light bulb <laughs> went off. So <laughs> awesome! Thank you so much, guys, and thank you for hanging on for another five minutes for us. 
Absolutely. <laughs> she would kill me otherwise. Loved your stuff, Willie. That was really Thank fun. you, everyone. We're going to leave now. Bye-bye. We love you. Bye, everybody at home. Bye, everybody. Stay safe.